Hi, this is part two of conclusions, observations we can make uh, from the case study of looking at a distributor's top four and bottom four customers as far as their value exchange ratios. Their margin percents less their cost to serve percent equaled how much net profit percent, if you will. Um, to carry on with uh, observations, uh, we do notice that, that at the bottom of the report, where we have high cost to serve customers, uh, if we do have uh, deep dive analytics, we find out you know reasons. And I, I want to really share some stories with you. Uh, I mean, the first question we have to look at is when we realize we are losing a lot of money with a customer, do, do we continue to choose to do that? Uh, uh, you know, part of the problem is, is if I'm, I'm paying my salespeople uh, incentive pay on margin dollars, and the guy at the bottom of the list, he's got big margin dollars, you know, $100,000 of sales, $25,000 in margin dollars, but $35,000 cost to serve, so we're losing $10,000. I'm paying my salesperson not to see the problem, not to hear the problem, not to want to be any part of the problem, because that's how they get paid. So I have got to intervene and say, look, we have to solve this problem and you have no downside risk. You know, and, and, and going forward, you know, to, and more to make more money, we have to be, figure out how to get you in alignment with me because if I'm a principal, I really get paid on net profit. And, and, and uh, so why do, why do we have everybody get sort of paid the same way that we'll all work and see things the same way? So that's a, that's a question issue we have to move towards, and we will in, in, in subsequent video clips. Um, but once we said, well, no, we, 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 we don't want to you know, continue to lose money on a regular basis, nor do we want a customer to have a hidden high total procurement cost, a lot of downtime, those kinds of things. So we've got to come up with a strategy of how we're going to go out and approach a, approach a customer. Well, you know, what we'll do is we'll, we'll break the customers into really friendly guys all the way to, you know, very unfriendly guys, and we'll go work with the super friendly guys first and get process smart, good at it, and we'll start to build our confidence, and we'll start to move towards, you know, more, more difficult, sticky wicket kind of customers. So, um, and in the index of, 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 of documents to support these ideas, you'll see some, some exhibits on my website that will help you do that. Um, the, uh, at the other extreme, when you go to the top of the report and say, well, golly, who are these guys where the margins are really low, but the cost of service even lower? And that really, for example, would describe Walmart. Uh, in, in, uh, in surveys of, of Walmart vendors are also scared of Walmart. They will tend to be anonymous surveys. but. I saw one where 65% of Walmart's vendors claimed the following things. First of all, Walmart was their biggest customer. Secondly, Walmart absolutely got the lowest price and they had the smallest margin contribution on Walmart business. Third, the cost to serve Walmart was so low that they actually made the most money on Walmart as a customer. And fourth, Walmart continued to grow year after year, so they were growing the vendor's net profit. On a, on, a, on a strong basis to the point where some of the vendors said, you know, we, we stopped selling very marginal regional discounters because we knew it was just a time, matter of time before Walmart put them out of business and scooped up that market share. So we were better to uh, really uh, continuously improve our relationship with Walmart. In the long run, we're going to get all the business anyway. Um, so when we go look at these best customers and, 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 and look at the inter-business process relationship and look at all the little elements and why on a scale from 1 to 10 there are 8s, 9s, and 10s, that's where we get best practice ideas that we can then turn around with confidence because we know what happens within our own customer portfolio and start to suggest and, 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 and implement those kinds of ideas with our, 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 our customers that are struggling. They're not, uh, they're not uh, as... Uh, flexible about seeing the whole, you know, uh, supply chain economic beast or elephant, if you will. The, uh, the, the next thing is that when we observe uh, the, these, these disparities and ratios is how can we convert win-lose price? In other words, if a customer says, look, I want a lower price, what they're saying is, I don't want to change anything except for one thing. I want you to make less money so I can make more money. It's a zero-sum game. That's all it is when you're basically you're trying to you know, play people off and get a, get a lower price. And to say, to call them on it and say, well, that, that's a nice offer, but you know, rather 
than having a zero-sum game and you win and I lose. How about if we changed the game and looked at a different way and came with a way where you can both win? And that's, you know, that's where we really want to go. And we realize, looking at the bottom half of our, our customer profitability portfolio, we have huge cost to serve on our side, TPC on their side, uh, supply chain friction uh, removal opportunities, uh, aside from the whole price issue. Um, the next observation would be if the trend in sub distribution channels since arguably 1988 when Walmart said, you know, we only want to see vice presidents of service value solutions here at headquarters, um, if the trend is towards supply chain buying and, and the, the, the National Association of Purchase Managers changed their name of the Institute of Supply Management 2001 and if any company is big enough to have a vice president of purchasing, they don't call them that anymore. They call them vice president of supply chain. Who in our company is the vice president of service value solutions? Let's open our ears and realize this is the next big wave. This is what customers need to be buying. If they're in a very stressed, consolidating industry, where there's too much capacity, not enough demand, so forth. And then the last observation is really a, a law that I'm going to you know, invent or coin, and that's the law of reciprocal channel activity costs. So as a hub economic creature between manufacturers and customers, a distributor is a process business. And if on our if, if our side of the fence we have activity costs, we cannot have those activity costs with the the, the part, part of the other side of the fence without them mirroring those costs more or less. So before if we went to either partner and said, Have you measured supply chain activity, math, etc.? They said no. That ends the conversation. But in our case, if we can measure it, at least we have the other half of the coin which from, from which we can infer, infer that they also have high or low or related costs. And this helps us to expand the conversation or start a conversation where we start to look at our relationship in a new, improved, win-win kind of way. So those are the end of the observations that come out of looking at vendor exchange management ratios. Thank you.